You can't tell me you are in the data science space or the data analysis space and you've not heard of the word probability distributions. In fact, as a data analyst, you must have actually used the concept of statistical inference to actually make conclusion about your data sets. And as a data scientist, you must have used one of the probability distributions that we have in statistics to actually model your data set. So the word of probability distribution is actually important to the data space. So in today's video, I'll be teaching you the types of probability distribution and also define the concept of probability distribution. I would also be touching the concept of random variables and the type of random variables and how the random variables with their probabilistic value make up a probabilistic distribution. So without further ado, let's get into the video properly. So the first step in understanding the concept of probability distribution is for us to understand a random variable. And to understand a random variable, we have to understand what an experiment is. So basically, an experiment is any occurrence that you can't predict the outcome. So a random variable is as a result of a random experiment. Take the experiment of ruling a fair die just once. We have the sample space of this experiment to be equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are actually random variables. Now we call them random variables because yes, they come from a random experiment but at the same time each of those random variables each of those values have a probabilistic value attached to them so the chance that one is going to show up is actually equal to one over six the chance that is going to show up is one over six and so much more so whenever we have a random experiment and we have a random variable attached to that random experiment there is actually a probabilistic value attached to each of the random variables in that experiment now a mathematical function that helps you to get a probabilistic value attached to each of the random variables of a random experiment is what we call a probability distribution. We can actually visualize a probabilistic distribution by plotting on the x-axis we have the random variables like in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and on the y-axis we have the probabilistic value that defines each of the random variables. When we do that we have a graph that comes in different shape based on how the random variables and uh, the probabilistic value actually interact with each other. So that now leads us to the types of probability distribution. And we have two of them. We have what we call the discrete probability distribution and we have the continuous probability distribution. So as the name implies, a discrete probability distribution is made up of discrete random variables. Uh, a random variable or a variable is said to be discrete if it is uh, finite, it is countable and can only take whole numbers of values. Take for example, the number of cars in your garage, the number of children in your family, the number of times you eat in a, in a week or in a day are actually discrete random variables because each of those values can never take a negative value. You can't tell me you have 3.5 number of children in your family. It's either it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but the number of children in your family can never take a decimal value. So the probability distribution that defines variables that are discrete in nature is what we call a discrete probability distribution. Now there are several types of discrete probability distribution in statistics which I will still come back to but I want to quickly generalize and talk about more extensively the concept of discrete probability distribution. The discrete probability distribution has some details that are very important to us. We have what we call the probability mass function and the probability mass function aka PMF is the mathematical function that helps us to get the probabilistic value attached to any random variable of a discrete probability distribution. We also have what we call the expected value and the expected value is simply the mean or the average of the distribution as a whole and it tells us the center or it helps us to locate the center of the distribution as a whole. We also have the variance and the standard deviation and as we know, the variance and standard deviation help us to determine the spread of the distribution. So let me give you an example of a random variable that is actually defined by a discrete probability distribution. This is actually a data set from someone that sells cake. You can see that we have the days and we can see that we have the number of cakes that is being sold each day. So the number of cakes right here is actually the random variable. And we can also see that we can get the chance 
of this guy selling a cake in each day now this right here is a perfect example of a discrete probability distribution now if we want to get the expected value of the distribution or the mean the formula is actually summation x times p of x that is the sum of the products of each of the random variable with the corresponding probability distribution this can be done in excel by just using a multiplication function and it's as easy as that the formula for the variance of a discrete probability distribution is given as summation into bracket x minus mu all squared times p into bracket x where your mu in this case is actually representing the expected value and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance now there are actually several types of discrete probability distribution we have a whole lot of them and i'll be talking extensively on each of them in subsequent videos but for now i'll just be listing some as examples we have the bernoulli distribution we have the binomial distribution we have the poisson distribution we have the hypergeometric distribution just to mention a few and each of those distribution that i just mentioned actually have a probability mass function they have an expected value they have a variance and they have a standard deviation attached to them a continuous probability distribution on the other hand is actually a probability distribution that is defined by continuous variables so a continuous random variable is actually that variable or there are those variables that they are actually not counting rather they are measurable uh, continuous random variables can also take decimal values and uh, continuous random variables can take a wide range or we can say an infinite range of values examples of continuous data includes height we have speed we have pressure we have weight just to mention a few now when we have several continuous random variables coming together with respect to their individual probabilistic value then they form a continuous probability distribution just like the discrete probability distribution there is also a mathematical function that we can actually use to define the probability distribution of a continuous distribution and we call that mathematical function a probability density function now the continuous distribution is a bit uh complex because it's actually in concrete calculus into it because for us to get the expected value and the variance that defines uh, a continuous distribution we actually have to start inculcating the concept of calculus so this in fact is the formula for the expected value the variance and uh, the standard deviation of a continuous probability distribution now we have a whole lot of examples for continuous distribution for example we have the normal distribution we have the exponential distribution we have the gamma distribution we have the uniform or rectangular distribution just to mention a few so this is just like an overview of the concept of probability distribution of random variables and the type of probability distributions that we are going to be meeting in the whole of statistics data science and data analysis in our next couple of videos i'll be touching each of the most important probability distributions that we need such as the uniform the normal the binomial the poisson the exponential and I'll be touching them in depth and also be using statistical tools like SPSS and also normal data tools such like Python, R and maybe Excel to actually teach us how we can work with each of those distributions. So make sure you actually subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications to get notified when I actually release that video. So if you learned something new from this video and you actually really enjoy this video, I would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up, just a like. Do you think I missed something or you have a question for me? Please go down to the comment section and drop your question. I am willing and I'm so happy to attend to them. Thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.